Right. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. In this video, what I'm going to do is um, nowadays a very prominent uh, application or model which is applied to a software uh, to estimate the efficiency of a firm is the data. So data development analysis is a model uh, that can be applied to a software uh, by which uh, we can measure uh, the technical and scale efficiencies of a firm. Uh, in order for that, we can see on the screen a software. The software is you know, published from the University of Queensland, Australia, School of Economics. In this website, anyone can freely get download the D version 2.1. So D version 2.1 is used to conduct data development analysis. Uh, if I scroll down and walk you through some information, for example, a data development analysis computer program. Um, for the two specific options that we can apply uh, DEEF model through software, the first is the standard constant return to scale and variable uh, return to scale data models that involve the calculation of technical and scale efficiencies where it is applicable. Um, the second is the application of more quiz data methods to panel data to calculate the indices of total factor productivity change and technological change, technical efficiency change, and scale efficiency change. But in this video, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the standard uh, constant return to scale and variable return to scale data models. All right. After get download the deep version 2.1, uh, it is basically comes with the Z folder. And after the zip folder get downloaded, we have to unzip it. After unzip, uh, the, um, the software look like this, the D. Uh, click on that. And as you can see that there are so many files. Sometimes, uh, you know, for the first time user get confused. There is nothing to be confused, right? All you have to hit on this uh, highlighted uh, tip, uh, which is the program that we have to learn, run. And then PDF file is the guideline. Um, you can read through and get the guideline of uh, how to run the tip, uh, version 2.1. And we can see here the file name. We do not need to change the file name. EG1 DTA, it is actually text from data and EG1 INS, it is actually how to actually code uh, the uh, function. And then EG1 out, after coding the function, when you run the model and you get the output, the output is EG1 output. So basically EG1 DTA, EG1 INS, and EG1 out. These three files you need to look into it, right? If you want to run another model, uh, with another data, you can use EG2 uh, DTA, EG2 INS, and EG2 out. Uh, similarly, for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, as many as you want, you can create. So our example is basically with the main program that we have to run, DAB, and then PDF if you want to get a study and get more uh, information and knowledge about it. And then let's take a raw data as an example and run through EG1, EG1 DTA, EG1 INS, and EG1 out. Okay. All right. I'm going to take you to um, some data from the website. For example, the data from here. As you can see, uh, there is an example, uh, uh, you know, in United Kingdom. Uh, consider a number of bank branches. For each branch, we have a single output measure number of percent transaction completed is the output and a single input measure the number of staff as you can see bank branch croydon um Dorking, red hill raygate so four branches right and personal transaction in thousand figure is given and a 25 for croydon 44 for Dorking, red hill for 80 and raygate for uh, 23. So these are the services are provided by the staff. 
So the number of stops in that particular branches are, for example, Croydon 18, Joking 16, Ratchin 17, and Raygate 11. So the first column, if we ignore the name of the branch, the first column, the number shows are the transactions are provided to the customers. Um, and then the second column shows the number of staff work to provide those services. So there are four branches. So first column is the airport, second column is import. So first we're gonna run through uh, the model, which is data envelope analysis with these two data. So we can uh, remember that uh, there could be multiple import, but we are working on the one with single import. Uh, it could be two, three, four, five, as many as imports you require, you can apply. Um, there is only one output right currently in this example, but there could be multiple outputs as well. But in today's video, I'll be talking about with one input and one output. Uh, take these uh, data, input and output straight. Uh, as the data size is very small, you can copy and paste. For example, good and data. As you can see that the first column shows um, the output for four branches and the second column shows input. Uh, we have to remember one thing that uh, we cannot put the branch name, we cannot put the name of the service or transaction are provided and the number of staffs because this um, uh, data set actually designed to extract on the number, uh, not, the, not the text form, all right? So once you have that, we have to save it. There is a save option. For example, save it now. And then go to the next option, which is INS. This is basically for, it is already, uh, you know, uh, designed uh, format. We do not need to change, for example, on top the first row. And the second row, we do not need to change. Um, so this four is number of firms. Currently, we have branches, so you can write rather than firms, we can write branches, okay? Number of branches, um, we can write in capital if you want. Okay. Number of branches. And then uh, after that, the one, which is number of time periods, actually it is a data for one single period, um, so it is one. And if it is for multiple period, then uh, we can change it from one to, if it is for 10 years or 10 periods, it will be 10. The second, third is the number of outputs. As we can see in the data, the output is one and the number of input input is one. First of all, we can run the model, the um, input oriented DMR. So there are two options, zero for input oriented, one for output oriented. First, we are running with the input oriented, meaning that if you see that to uh, achieve the design level of output, uh, whatever it is given in the format, how much actually could we have to change over? That's what called the input oriented. Uh, if you want to see the output oriented with the same level of input, how much output actually we have to uh, have uh, is for the one. So now in this model, we are running with the zero, which is input oriented. And zero is constant return to scale. What we mean by constant return to scale is, is an economic term. Um, so once we change input, it has a proportional change on the output, which is constant return to scale. Um, the, that's for zero, right? And if you run the model with one, it will be a variable return to scale, meaning that uh, if you change the input, the output will be changed as well, whether it is decreasing or increasing. Uh, zero for the last one, the uh, multi-stage, it means that in this uh, program, we're gonna see uh, the multi-stage information. Everyone will see the output, we'll look at it and talk about the output. If it is the case, we can save and close the window and go to the, um, the deep program. So remember, EG1, which is the data in text format, we already done that. 
each one INS, uh, it is actually the uh, information which is regarding the program that we have to run. And the third one, which is EG1 out, is the output. So after we run the model, then we come to the output. Let's go to the model. So once we click on the model, which is deep, we see the black screen uh, shows on the desktop. We do not need to uh, change anything. All we have to do is, as you can see that the last um, the row, uh, there is something like uh, uh, flipping, right? We have to write eg1 hyphen ins dot txt as the uh, language for running the model. Um, eg1 means that we work on uh, with the data which is eg1 dtl and then after that the second one which is about how to run the program there is some information which is eg1 ins so that's eg1 ins dot txt uh, the data are in the text format so we have to write this and you just hit on the enter button. Now you go to the EG1 out. So if you go to the EG1 out, we can see the output is generated, right? So it is input oriented DM model, as we said before, it is input oriented. And scale assumption is we have taken zero, which is constant return to scale um, that we can see from, if you go back, see INS, before we run the model, we say that it is zero, meaning that it is input oriented. We put zero, meaning that it is constant return to scale. Okay. And we can go to the result now. In the result, we can see as it is input oriented here, scale assumption is constant return to scale. Let's see the result of the program. Um, we had actually four branches, uh, four firms. All right, tactical efficiency for from one is uh, 1.00, which is 100% tactical efficiency, meaning that uh, for branch one, which is Croydon, whatever the uh, services they provided, which is output by the input number of staff is used fully 100% and the branch is 100% technically efficient. For the branch two, you can see that 39% approximately 40% technically efficient this branch, right? Um, and then third branch is 68 and fourth branch is 30% uh, technically efficient. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to see actually the branch specific information, you can go down. There is some other information, for example, output slags, they're all zero, you don't need to uh, think about it. Uh, do not need to interpret all this information Input slack is 0, 0, 0. We do not need to think of it. And peer to peer, actually, there are four branches. Branch one is, uh, you know, uh, related with highest efficiency, which is branch one. Branch two is with the, because branch two, three, they have to, at the end of the day, focus on the branch one, because branch one is doing pretty much well. That's why with the every branch, we can see the peer is one. And if you go down, we don't need to look at, look at the pair weight, uh, pair summary. All you have to look at is the branch summary, as you can see there. For the Croydon branch, we can see the 100% technical efficiency. And Croydon branch output is 125, and they are using 18 input, which is number of staff. And as you can see, the projected value is also output 125, input is 18, it means that uh, there should not be any change in the input uh, if they want to get output 125. We run the model input oriented, so there should not be change in input if they want to get 125 output. Uh, if you go down, you see that the second branch, as it is input oriented, original input is uh, 16, but uh, to produce the 44, uh, they are using 16 currently. But what our program suggests that they do not need to use 16 input, they need to use 6.336. It means approximately uh, six or approximately seven number of steps they can use to get the design number of uh, transaction, which is 44. Meaning that the same output they can get by utilizing 
less input, which is six. So currently they are using actually much input. So we can call it actually um, cost to return to scale, right? Um, and then the third branch, if you look at, currently they are producing 80 uh, transactions by utilizing 17 number of staff. Um, as it is cost to return to scale, we can see that 80, same number of output, uh, because it is input oriented, uh, there should not be changing the output. We are actually expecting the same uh, amount of output by utilizing, uh, whether increasing the uh, input or decreasing input. Uh, we can see that the input is 11 uh, projected value. So it means that currently we are using higher input to produce 80. Uh, we can produce same level of output, which is 80 by utilizing 11.520. But the technical efficiency currently is 0 0.67 with this portion, right? So they can move on to this, in which case their technical efficiency will increase. So still this branch has uh, option to increase their technical efficiency. And finally, the large branch is the same interpretation we can give. So this is what call actually the D version 2.1, uh, which is applied to measure the technical efficiency uh, of a firm. Uh, in this case, bank branch technical efficiency measure. Right, I think that my video is uh, meaningful. You understand and will be benefited by downloading the DEEP 2.1 from the University of Queensland the Department of Economics website freely and then um, apply for your academic purpose. Uh, with this, I would say that Thank you very much. Uh, thank you.